Now for the inverse of the parabola. Okay, before we can continue with the inverse of the parabola, we first need to go and remind ourselves what is a function again. Okay, so a function we defined as a rule that assigns to every element or number in the domain only one value from the range. Okay, so that might sound a little complicated, but what it simply means is for every x there is only one y. Now, with that in mind, let's go have a look at some of the curves that we've already looked at so far. So far we've done the straight line, the parabola, the hyperbola, and the exponential function. In each one of these you'll notice that for every x we have only a single y value. So for that x value we will have a single y value. For that x value we will have a single y value. For that x value we will have a single y value. For that x value we will have a single y value. You'll notice that the way I tested it was to draw a vertical line upwards and then to see where it cuts my curve. I then draw a horizontal line to find my y value. With this in mind we can now go and state a test called the vertical line test. The vertical line test states that if a vertical line intersects with my curve more than once, then the curve is not a function. Notice how vertical lines intersect these graphs only once. So if I go and draw vertical lines everywhere, vertical line, vertical line, vertical line, vertical line. Okay, there's a vertical line that doesn't in intersect at all, but we said if it intersects more than once, okay, so it intersects less than once. Vertical line, vertical line. So here we have vertical lines intersecting only once or maybe none at all, okay, which means all of these will be functions. So what will a non-function look like? Well, one example of a non-function is a circle. The reason being that some vertical lines, like this one, intersects more than once. There it goes once, and there it goes again. So this is not a function. Another example is one that looks like this. It kind of looks like a parabola that's lying on its side. Again, you will notice that vertical lines intersect it more than once. There's one, and there's another one. Which means that this is not a function. So let's continue now to have a look at the inverse of the parabola. Let's first find it algebraically. So we know that the parabola would have an expression like this y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c but we're only going to look at the y is equal to ax squared format. In this format we remember that the first step is to swap x and y. This gives us x is equal to a y squared. The second step is to solve for y. Let's now have a look at the inverse of the parabola. Let's first look at it algebraically. You might recall that the format for the parabola is fx is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. We're only going to have a look at the one where we have ax squared. So if you recall how the steps work, the first step is swap x and y. Swap x and y, just remember that fx 
represent y, so that's going to be x is equal to a y squared. The second step is solve y. So if we continue to solve y, we get y squared is equal to 1 over a x, and then y will be equal to plus or minus, because we're taking a square root on both sides to get rid of the square, and that gives me plus or minus in front, 1 over a x. Now you might have intuitively had the idea that in this case, the, the inverse of a square, in other words, asking the opposite question of squaring would be square rooting, and you would be correct. So what does that look like graphically? Well, first of all, the parabola would have looked like this. And to find the inverse, we reflect it in the line y is equal to x. So there's the line y is equal to x, and the inverse would be reflecting in that line. So first of all, we're going to reflect this leg And that leg will reflect like this. And then we're going to reflect this leg. And that leg will reflect on this side. Do you notice that parabola lying on its side again? In other words, this inverse is not a function. So is there a way to look at the function and figure out if its inverse would be a function? Well, of course. It's called the horizontal line test. The horizontal line test simply states that if a horizontal line cuts a function more than once, then the inverse will not be a function. So you notice that if I draw a parabola, whether I draw it this way or this way, any horizontal line that I now draw will cut it more than once. It doesn't mean the parabola is not a function. Remember, a vertical line still cuts only once, but a horizontal line cuts more than once, which means once it is reflected, and it looks like this now, the vertical line will intersect it more than once, making it not a function. So is this something we can do to the original function so that after the reflection, the inverse will also be a function? Well, yes, there is. All we need to do is cancel a part of the graph so that the horizontal line will only cut once. So if I cancel this part of my function, a horizontal line will only cut once. So how do we get rid of a part of a function? Well, we do so by restricting the domain. Instead of having x an element of all the real numbers, which is the domain of a parabola, we're going to say that x is only going to be the values from 0 upwards. That means we will only look at the graph from here onwards. If we now look at the reflection in the line y is equal to x, only one of the legs will be reflected, which means the inverse will be this function. That function is called the inverse equal to the square root of 1 over a times x. Do you notice I chose the positive part? It used to be a plus minus, but I only chose the positive part. In other words, the part that is above the x-axis. I could have also eliminated the positive part or just chose the negative side. In other words, I could have restricted my domain to all of the x values less than equal to 0. That would have eliminated this part of my function and I would have only worked with this part. When I reflect that part I would have been working with this leg. This leg is called 
negative square root of 1 over a times x. Well, I hope all the colors and scratching didn't confuse you too much. Enjoy practicing!